Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. We're, We're Moss Charlie. So if you've wanted to bring real paper into your digital artwork, this is going to be the tutorial For that you. you'd want to see. Yeah. Right? So we were looking through our old art supplies and we saw brown paper and we were thinking about, let's use this real life texture and put it into mm. art. <laughs> exactly. Because it'd be really nice to be able to have real textures in digital art. Right? Yeah, like, I miss honestly, that. Honestly, <laughs> actually, I know, right? Like, because there's certain textures, like this brown paper, that actually are specific to brown paper. Like, if you wanted to do like charcoal, Conti, colored pencils, it's always kind of like a fun paper to have to, to sort of just create artwork on. Sometimes, yeah, you know. Yeah, even colored oh, pencils. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I did, but Contis and everything. I mean, it was just kind of like that was what we, you know, I did for fun sometimes. Yeah. So we thought it'd be a good idea. You know, yeah. just to bring it into uh, Krita so you can use it. So here we go. Here's how we uh, how we started doing it was we took our own roll of paper, in this case, brown paper, got it, some scissors, a pencil and just something, something to, to hold, hold it, it down. down. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then mm -hmm. just sort of measured it. Uh, Eight and a half by eleven, basically. Yeah, or, pretty know, much used almost, a, a right? piece of paper. Yeah. To. Um, it's smart to do it that way. Yeah, just as a quick way to do it, and just traced around it with pencil. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that was just a simple way to do it. So if this is something you uh, like, a texture you have lying around the house, this is a really good way to add the texture, or you know, to get it to the scanner. Yeah, that's the whole point, because this is just the prep. Yeah. For it. So you can cut it out with these scissors like this, which is, you know, nice if you can get everything nice and straight. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's really cool. But it, it's kind of, you know, it's it's fun to work with, but it can be a little bit, you know, finicky. So if you happen to have um, a paper cutter or anything like that, you know, that's what we're going to use in the next step, right? So, oh, yeah, yeah we right? do. We show if you have so, a, yeah. a paper cutter, you could use that too. To, Just line everything you know, up and there you go. Fancy straight edges. Yeah. If you please. It's easier if it's in the scanner and that kind of stuff. But it's just up to whatever you have. You don't have to have the tools like this. Yeah. Right? Scissors work just fine. They do, honestly. Scanner is necessary, but if you want to use a phone and it has that ability, that's okay. But we do recommend a scanner. Yeah. Um, we cleaned it off with a dusting cloth. For sure. And for sure. Uh, then. It's important. Because this paper's actually got some dust and stuff, just particles naturally from paper. So. Yeah. Okay. After uh, you scan it in the you know, you put it in the scanner, then we started to scan it. Mm -hmm. So here we're going to uh, go in and it's at 600 DPI and it's all set to custom yeah. and we're going to press preview and mm -hmm. starts uh, doing scanning. its thing. Yeah. So it does the preview for the scanner. Yeah. We yeah. are using right now uh, Nobara 42 on your computer, right? The new one. Yes. There we go. So it works really great. Yeah, and then and we press scan. Scanning. Look at that. It's awesome. So we scan the parts that we like to. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we're going to take this and we're going to save this, right? Yes. So, so we got to remember where to put it. Yeah, that's a good point on that. And what to name it. So yeah, what to name it. And uh, so we saved it as a PNG and we put it in documents. And we've done this a few times, as you can see. Got to test all our stuff. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just to make sure. So yeah. Save it. Once it's saved, you want to open up Krita, right? So now we know it's saved. Yeah. And we're going to so go then... into Krita and open it up. Yep. Boom. There it is. Nice. So now that we have this and it's the one we created, yeah. <laughs> we're going to open up a new document. Now in this document, we actually have it set up for 3,508 3, by 2480 at 300 pixels. Um, and it's on a horizontal setup, so, or um, um, landscape, sorry. And we're just gonna basically take the texture that we scanned and bring it into this new document. Yeah. But it takes a lot of steps to get it. So we just go to file and copy mm -hmm. on the brown page we had, the brown paper, and then we go back into the other picture and we go file and, and paste, or edit paste. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's a big one, so it sometimes takes a little bit of time to show yeah. up in your layers. So yeah, it's a huge, it's a huge. It's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> so we zoom out specifically because there's a point in which we're going to be able to move this brown paper around. So with the transform tool. Yeah. And uh, realized uh, you can then uh, 
change the size, yeah. move it around <laughs> because there's there's sometimes the paper might not have the texture you're looking for. Um, and we actually will zoom ours out so it actually is larger. Yeah, you know, we'll make it a larger, you know, a little bit bigger so that the texture is more prominent. Yeah. Right. And then we'll we'll find out where it is and and if we like it, where the document is being lined up. Then there we go. So once we're happy, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to. Oh yeah. Also, just oh, you could see on the bottom uh, when we were trying to move it. It takes a while to uh, uh, upload, a yeah, because it's so big. So now we're going to uh, the paint layer. Yeah, below paint it, layer right? below. Uh, select all. Yeah, and then we go to the brown paper, and then we go and we're going to press edit, edit copy, and copy, and then we go back, back to our paint to layer. layer. No, it's funny, huh? <laughs> yeah. And then we're gonna paste it. Yeah, into that. Into that layer. So it's almost like we cut out a little window that's gonna fit inside the paint layer. Yeah. And then so, we can yeah. delete the big paper that we were uh, getting it from. Yeah. So now you're set with that. Yeah. Um, now what we're going to do is rename this so that we know what it is. And we're going to call it paper. There it is. Paper. <laughs> the next step is going to be desaturating. So we want to go up to filter, filters, adjust, and all the way over to HSB. HSB adjustment. And then you click that. Then you go uh, to saturation, which is the third bar, and you go all the way down and desaturate it. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of, we like the lightness, so we thought we'd put it up to three, just just because we like that. Mm -hmm. And we pressed OK. There we go. Then we're going to duplicate this. Yes. So once we get so a handle right on that, click. <laughs> right click your mouse and go up to duplicate, duplicate layer or mask. And then we duplicate it. And here we're going to make a, a little paper sandwich. Mm -hmm. So we put uh, one of them in between the paint layer and one on top. So there's paper on top and paper on the bottom. So we're going to rename this, right? Yeah. And this is going to be paper topper. Yes. Right? Okay. Then the bottom one is going to be paper depths. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Nice. Just so we know the difference. Yeah. Because <laughs> these are layers we don't actually paint on or yeah. draw on at all. These are kind of like the effects layers in a way, I guess you want to call it. Yeah. Anyways. Now we're going to change uh, the layer mode to grain extract on the uh, paper topper. And if you don't have it, you can go to mix on the bottom there and open that up and you can see uh, grain extract and make sure it has a check mark next to it. Definitely. And then it'll become part of your favorites. Yeah. So, so minimize that window mm -hmm. and you'll see it up in, in your favorites. And don't worry, when you click on it, it'll look invisible right now. It means you're doing the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> now what you're going to do is you're going to click the right mouse button and go to add. And we're going to add a filter mask. Yep. to this. Now, this thing, this this window pops up and you can't really read a lot of what's in there on the side, but just make sure that you're on the adjust Tab. drop down, yeah. you right? Yeah. And then you want to go to the word invert and see the texture just popped right into place. And now you know you're in the right way, doing the right thing. Nice. And then there press OK. Yep. There it is. Now we're going to go down to the paper depths and we're going to Right add mouse a, click, yeah. right? Yeah, we're going to yeah. add a filter layer for this too. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I'm going to go to right mouse click to add, and then we're going to add a filter mask. And this one's different because we felt that you could, this would be good if you could adjust like the, the levels or the brightness and contrast. Yeah, and again, so it's the same thing under adjust, and it's we're clicking levels, and then we press OK. Exactly. Now, if you want to adjust this layer, you can press the right mouse button again. I think it will show that, but probably not. Don't know. But I think you oh, can, we, yeah. We oh. will, but we're going to, oh, we're, gonna we're just talking it. about the, the layers and yeah, what, what they, they do. do. Oh, this top layer, the paper topper, the when it's actually set to the green extract and the filter is set to invert, this creates a highlight that emphasizes the topography of the real paper. So that's what creates that illusion honestly, of how it's going to work. So it does emphasize the actual texture itself. So yeah, it's going to be neat. Nice. Look at that paper. <laughs> exactly. Right. It'll yeah. be neat to draw on it. And that's the whole point. Yeah. And then this, the paper depths, the 
filter mask set to levels, we thought would be a good idea because you can actually select that and make it so that you can adjust, like we said, brightness contrast. So we'll show that though. Yeah, that's pretty exactly. cool. That'd be cool. So yeah. Oh, uh, locking these is a good idea too. Uh, yeah. If you don't want to actually uh, draw on them, we found that that would be good. And you can actually change the layer style to red so that it's sort of like a visual, you know, no, don't draw, don't on, draw on that. Yeah. 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 So we do that to both of these, the paper topper will be the next one to change. Yeah. So then we'd go into their layer style, change it to red and then another red. Mm -hmm. So we just, yeah. and then we could lock them to know don't, or to actually have it so you can't draw on it. Yeah. That's really important. So that's a little lock drawn on those picture. accidentally many times. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah. And you can also, yeah, yeah, the sorry. top layer you can still adjust. So we're showing on the uh, paper topper, you can adjust the opacity. Mm -hmm. And we'll show more when, when it's drawn that uh, when you, um, it, it shows how the top layer has more texture or less. Mm -hmm. uh, It'll emphasize it. Yeah, by, by playing opacity. with the opacity. Yeah, so it's kind of a you know simple tool that'll make it definitely seem a lot more papery. <laughs> yeah. There we go. So. Nice. See, same thing with the bottom. Yeah. You can do that too. So we're, we're changing the opacity on the bottom because we plan on making uh, the background mm -hmm. uh, something we can color. Yeah. So have, have this paper color, like that brown paper. So yeah. we're unlocking that background uh, by clicking the lock button and then we're going to change it. So we're going to rename it to paper color there mm -hmm. <laughs> and then uh, we're going to just uh, pick a new color for it so uh, yeah you can pick any color really it doesn't have to be brown so we're just picking this uh, kind of peachy color and then we're going to go to edit and then fill foreground color yeah. there you go you got it a be darker if you want you yeah can adjust it to whatever you want yeah so. so we made it a little bit darker because mm -hmm. it's like oh it's pretty light let's make it a little darker that'd be yeah. nice so edit uh, filled foreground color and a little bit darker. Yeah, the, the paper depth because it's actually um, You're sort of using the transparency of that of paper depths. Yeah, it'll change the uh, color of the actual layer So just make sure you can do that. But um, if you want to adjust uh, the levels like, you know, to en enhance the Yeah, make sure texture. it's unlocked go up to properties and then you can play with the levels. So like if you uh, are on the layer and you right click and go into properties or uh, press F3 as a hotkey, you can change the levels. There we go. Yeah. So it's kind of like you don't really see it that much because the color kind of gets you know, blacked out in a way, but you're gonna definitely have the ability to adjust those levels in the end. But it does actually desaturate the uh, paper color. So as we said, just make sure you pick the right one and it'll just take a little bit of time, but make sure you're actually going to be drawing on this page because this is the one you need to. Oh yeah. You know, we, so we on. made it green. Yeah. Just so that we knew that it would be drawable basically. Uh, pick your paintbrush, you know, there we go. Um, we actually have some nice charcoal stuff that comes with Krita we felt was really, really good to use. It really emphasizes a lot of what this paper can do or you know paper like this with a high texture so yeah you know we want to show it. how the opacity of paper topper will affect you know how the actual texture of the paper will be you know a lot a lot more exposed so like if you go to paper topper and adjust that opacity if you look closely you can actually see the topography like really raise up like it becomes a lot more apparent of that texture of the paper. Yeah. And it's just about what your personal feel is, what you really want to go for, what the look you want to go for. So, yeah, and it, yeah. that's what changes it up with it. And it, it looks really nice. I yeah. think that's a fun fun way to, to do that, is to play with the opacity of paper top. Yeah, it yeah. does. I think that that's a good one, you know, because it is actually technically a transparent. Yeah. Um, when you actually do that invert, what that does is it, it actually pulls all the color out of it. So it's almost like, transferring a color to alpha but it actually is just part of that uh, mask that you know filter mask that you put on that filter layer so just doing some fun drawing just wanted to see what it's like to paint on this and draw on this so we yeah. can just really show that this really will enhance your art if you choose to use it because it's real paper 
Yeah. You know, and you're actually drawing on the actual paper texture. It's pretty magical, I, I would say, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, and you so, can yeah. even erase and yeah, see, see the paper texture below it. Exactly. And so. it's really nice, too, with blending. So you can keep erasing yeah. and you can blend with it. Yeah, you get smudge, you can blend. Here we go, yeah. yeah. And we'll be blending there. So, and you'll still maintain that texture that you've got, you know. Yeah. Of the paper itself. Because it shows because above it and, and below, below it. Exactly. It's like, it's it's creating that illusion of those highlights that we would naturally see on paper when we're drawing it from like the light source, you know? Yeah. So yeah. And you can blend anything you want. It's really a neat thing to do and experiment with. So, you know, you might want to give this a try, to be honest. Yeah, to um, put your own paper texture in. Yeah, exactly. You know? So, you know, we really hope that uh, you know, you try this out and that creating, um, you know, a paper texture like this or, you know, using paper in your way will really help you out. So yeah. it really is up to you how you want to use this. So, I mean, it's just like painting on any other system or any other layers. Just make sure you're in between that, you know, the two paper layers. So yeah. you can just add different things and erase it and delete and just have a good time experimenting like this. So. Yeah. 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 And we were really inspired by uh, Ramon Miranda's oh, video yes, yes. of uh, the infinite canvas, or, or I think that was what it was called. Smart canvas. Smart right? canvas. Yeah. It feels infinite, which is smart. <laughs> <laughs> so, it does. Yeah. With all the options you can do on those are so cool. So ours is just a very simplistic kind of version where we just wanted to see what it would look like with a uh, paper that we just had. Yeah. Like having using real paper to yeah. create an actual picture. So. So we hope you enjoyed and maybe inspires you to do some, some more. Some more. Yeah. Most charmly out. out. Have fun. Bye. Bye.